There we go. There we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, back with more on, not more, we're back now with the free radio show, Brain Food from the Heartland. Is it Friday yet? I'm starting to talk like it's Friday. It's like a whole week. I get that Friday, Bill, I get that Friday, like burnout thing, I think. Not when I was younger. On not when I was young, not when I was your age, I didn't have that. Hey, man, it's only, it's only hump day. Come on, come on. Yeah, I, you get, again, when you get my age, it's like, I should, this is terrible. I confuse the days. It's like uh, uh, yesterday, I thought it was Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Monday, I thought it was Thursday. I, th- I just, <laughs> I get all hey, as long as, as long as every day is a good day, it doesn't really matter what day it is, right? Yes, yes. What was that? Uh, oh, God. It's a good day by, oh, not, I've, I've got to find it. I'll send it to you. I'm uh-huh. delighted to have you back. Always an honor. To talk with you, Attorney Bill Marler, I I uh, learned so much from you over the years about so many things about food and food safety, etc. If you don't mind, I would do. We obviously want to talk about the Wendy's issue and what's going on in Ohio, Michigan, etc. But take me back to that Jack in the Box case, if you would. Yeah, sure. Um, I first started working in. Uh, food cases uh, in 1993, um, there was an E. coli outbreak uh, linked to Jack in the Box restaurants. Uh, it was E. coli contaminated hamburger uh, that was uh, essentially being undercooked. Um, most of the cases were in a five state region in the West, California, Oregon, Washington, uh, Idaho, Nevada. Um, ultimately, there were about 650 people sick, four children died, uh, about 75 primarily children developed what's known as acute uh, kidney failure or hemolytic uremic syndrome, which is a potentially uh, fatal uh, condition caused by uh, the toxin that's released from the E. coli bacteria. And so, and since then, I've been involved in uh, every major uh, foodborne illness outbreak that's occurred in the United States and around the world. Um, and so, and, and, you know, it's nice to be on with you again. And it's unfortunate that, you know, uh, Ohio, uh, the upper Midwest, Ohio and Michigan, Indiana, uh, are, you know, in the middle of, a, of, a, of another, uh, E. coli outbreak, um, that looks like it's going to, you know, be well over 150 people sick, maybe close to 200 by the time all things is said and done. And fortunately, there have been no deaths, um, but there have been uh, probably close to 10 to a dozen people who've developed acute kidney failure, mostly children who've been oh. on dialysis. Um, oh. Yeah. And one woman, one woman in Indiana, uh, there's a handful of people in Indiana who got sick. Um, and uh, one person, a woman, young woman, uh, suffered what appears to be a, a stroke. Um, and so, yeah, this, this is, it's, it's serious, serious stuff, but, but, you know, unfortunately we're seeing it all over again. You know, a, a lot of people, um, it's just, I, how do I want to say it, um, minimize it, not with what you sure. said, but they think, okay, yeah. you call it, I'll get a, a, a stomach ache, I'll throw up or whatever. And it'll be out of my system. That's just not the case. That may be the case with some. Yeah, yeah, no. So, so in any given outbreak, um, I'll give you an example. So let's, let's just this outbreak that's occurring right now. um, Let's just say it's 150. And I think that's probably a relatively conservative number. Those are the people that uh, get sick enough to go to the doctor to get a a stool culture and to be counted by the, uh, by the, health authorities. Um, The CDC says for every one person counted, there are about 10 times that number that actually consumed the same food and got sick, but weren't sick enough to go to the doctor. So you're absolutely right. You know, um, you know, most of the time when people get E. coli, they, they get sick for a few days, but not sick enough to go to the doctor. Unfortunately, you know, there, there are people who, uh, for a variety of reasons, their, uh, their, their age, their, if they're immune compromised, how much bacteria they ingest, a lot of different factors uh, can cause people to get quite sick. Um, 
about five to 10% of all of the cases will develop this syndrome, um, which is untreatable. Um, and, um, you know, even in the best hospitals has, you know, a death rate of about five, another five to 10%. So, you know, hopefully we don't see uh, any deaths in this outbreak, but I also wouldn't be surprised if we unfortunately did. Attorney Marler, uh, with when the kids and you're saying uh, on dialysis, mm-hmm. um, is that a permanent? No, that's a good question. Uh, that's a good question. Um, generally, no. Um, uh, it, can, it can happen. Yeah, uh, I've seen certainly uh, outbreaks where people never get off dialysis and then need a, a acutely oh. uh, a, a transplant acutely yeah. of, a, of a of a kidney. And and when they do that, when these this bacteria attacks the kidneys, it attacks both of them. So both of them fail. And so you you need to have either continued dialysis or you need a transplant. But that's pretty rare that um, that you need a transplant right away. Usually, what happens is more insidious. Um, the, the the toxin. Uh, uh, splits the red blood cells in the human body, and those little red those blood cells don't carry enough oxygen, and they clog up the capillaries of the the human body, primarily in the kidney, liver, brain, pancreas, and it causes necroses of the of the the tissues, and if it causes enough problem, um, you know ultimately your kidneys will fail. Um, it may be that. Essentially, a, an HUS uh, diagnosis, hemolytic uremic diagnosis, you know, can basically, you know, take you from a five-year-old child's kidneys to a seventy-five-year-old person's kidneys. So you just basically, you know, you know, in a week or two, can you know add seventy years of your of your life to your kidneys, and so that's why kids' kidneys fail so over time and require a transplant. So it's pretty. It's a and and there's all kinds of you know the kidneys and you know the 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 glands around it surrounding them you know have a, a lot to do with you know a, a lot of the regulation of our body and it causes you know for some children it'll cause them to you know not grow appropriately um uh having you know their bones will be brittle i mean it's it's a uh, it, it can be an incredibly serious you know, even with the best medical care, it, there's there's not a lot people can do. Uh, once somebody gets HUS, it's just really um, supportive care um, and uh, dialysis in the hopes of getting your kidneys to restart. So it's a you know it's a serious thing. It's just a tragedy to see it, you know, happening, especially because it appears to be linked to romaine lettuce again again <laughs> so, I'm just, I, yeah uh, and yeah. you know and it'll be uh, and i guarantee you that there'll be a cow somewhere in in the background uh of where the lettuce was grown because cattle are the reservoir for this particular kind of uh e coli e coli 0157h7 it's a it's a pathogen uh doesn't make cows sick uh, but it it's deadly to humans. The feces gets, uh, and yeah. uh, you know, I know we've talked about this before because with all of what's going on, and I know I, I want to do a disclaimer for you, Attorney Bill Marler, you're not advocating vegetarianism, veganism, anything, but it's that it's the factory farms and these sort of things. No, no, no. Yeah. It's uh, yeah, it's, okay. it is. Yeah. I mean, the, there's no question that E. coli 0157H7 is a, opportunistic pathogen that um, grew up in uh, the factory farms of America. And um, it and it's, shouldn't be a surprise to anyone when you congregate animals, you know, or humans in, in tight quarters over a long period of time, they, you know, uh, bugs uh, evolve quickly and uh, they became pathogenic um, and, you know, they've gotten now have gotten into the environment um, into our, you know, some of our water supplies, uh, certainly, you know, in the, in the growing areas uh, where their leafy greens are grown and cattle are raised, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a problem. I mean, 
a problem that's not going to not going to go away. I know we've talked about. Well, this. you know, I mean, it's it's one that it's one that I think requires. I think we need to grapple with this idea, but it's it's one. It's certainly not without um, complexities. Um, you know, I mean, you think about the Western United States, and uh, you know how uh, you know during the 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 Great Depression. Um, Western they built they built all of these uh, water uh, ways to get water from you know here to there and dams and um, and you created all these incredible growing areas Yuma Arizona and the Salinas Valley that are you know filled with you know they feed us and many people around the world um, but you know cows were there too and so how do you decide? You know, how do you decide who who is there first and land use issues? Those are tough, tough things. And, you know, farmers are not known for their ability to compromise. And, you know, and so uh, and they're very powerful, um, you know, and so, uh, you know, it, regulation is difficult, uh, especially land use regulation is difficult. But, you know, the alternative is to, you know, a 20 something year old woman with a stroke or a child who dies or a child who's gonna need a kidney transplant. And, you know, I think we need to grapple with that because it just doesn't strike me that having, you know, several hundred people sickened by romaine lettuce every year yeah. is a sustainable thing that we should allow in, you know, in a civilized society. Yeah, we're, Attorney Marla, we're, uh, again, the, like you say, here we are again with romaine, and I love romaine. I was telling you about a, a salad, a new salad recipe that I have. Uh, they're created by Nava Atlas, by the way. It's going to be back on the show uh, in a couple of months. But she, the, um, we, and you know, I've said this, and I've said this on the show at home. We, I marlarize, I call it marlarizing, <laughs> because again, you've said in the past, you, you, I've seen the triple washed kale and triple washed. And right. we still have to wash it. We have to wash and thoroughly wash, right? Not just a quick rinse. Right. Yeah. No, I, I completely agree with you. So, yeah. I mean, again, and, and if you love romaine, if you love produce, if you love lettuces and uh, greens, then you've got to really, really yeah. watch it. Again, when you're out, that's different. You don't know. How is yeah. washed again? The yeah, romaine, it was last it, year, right? The romaine was it? Oh, was it's it really, it's like every year, every I mean, year. We, yeah, we we had one every year for God knows how long. But you know, it's interesting too. This that the uh, in this particular outbreak, they the, it appears to I uh, you know it was the lettuce that was served on the hamburgers, and their Wendy's has <sighs> that whether they developed or you know they decided to use it, but it was a a romaine iceberg hybrid so if you if you it's a it's a you know, they the scientists probably at uc davis in california developed this hybrid uh that has qualities of romaine and qualities of iceberg um and i think you know the the ones that i've seen uh it seems like it's just like the right size to put on a hamburger you I know see. so yeah so i mean it's going to be interesting as the, you know, as, as I do what I do in the litigation side of things um, to kind of core in on, you know, what was going on and how this happened and how it got contaminated and, you know, the use of this particular kind of product. Um, why were they using it? Um, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see. As, as cases. And again, you've got cases uh, in Ohio, Michigan. You've got a lot of cases. On this. Yeah, yeah. On so, this so pre presently, the CDC is counting about eighty-four people, primarily in Michigan and Ohio. There are a handful of cases counted in uh, Pennsylvania and Indiana, um, but those numbers are are will go up. Um, you know, just one county in Ohio is counting twenty-two uh, or twenty-three. Wood County, uh, Bowling Green area is counting twenty-three. The and the state total in Ohio is 23. And there are multiple cases in other parts of the of the state. It's just that it takes time for the 
cases to be counted and then in a sense uploaded and then counted again by the CDC. So I, I expect this week that the numbers will be, you know, a hundred, hundred and a quarter. And then by the time the outbreak is officially called over, it's going to be, you know, 150, 175, unfortunately. And you can expect, you know, probably 15 to 20 people will develop acute kidney failure because of this. Um, right now there's of this 84 people sickened, the CDC counts 36 who were hospitalized. So, you know, especially during COVID times, you know, nobody wants to be hospitalized. And so, That's you know, it's just an added stress. So no, abs absolutely. I have a, a friend in the UK whose daughter uh, in her thirties uh, uh, needs dialysis awaiting a, a kidney transplant and through COVID. I mean, yeah. not out, out. It was just, I don't know what word to use, hellish, difficult because oh, yeah. mom, mom couldn't go. And, you know, it's just everything, yeah. everything about it these days. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you don't use, we, not used to get sick need, in the hospital. Right. Right. And we just need, you know, it's, um, I was told, you know, I tell, I know I've told you the story uh, uh, that, you know, for the first 10 years of my practice, it was primarily E. coli cases linked to ground beef. Right. And, you know, eventually, you know, the sheer volume of the children who were sickened and died from that and the impact on the beef industry, you know, it really caused the government and the industry um, to, you know, deal with it. And, it took time, took about a decade of, you know, multiple lawsuits and multiple, you know, regulations. But now, you know, I hardly ever have an E. coli case linked to hamburger. I mean, that it doesn't that doesn't mean that I advocate, you know, eating undercooked hamburgers and I don't. It doesn't I mean there won't be, correct? Yeah, but, yeah. But but the but the 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 numbers of recalls, you just don't hear about hamburger recalls anymore. And that's because they you know, they've done a lot of interventions and they test it and hold the product until the test results come back and then they don't ship it without knowing. Um, and so, you know, where that used to be 95% of my business in my law firm is now essentially zero. So I, I look at that as a positive thing. Sure. And I think other industries can learn from that, 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 you know, all is not lost, you know, that, that, you know, that we can do these things if we put our mind to it and find, you know, I mean, I, I think you and I share the same thing, Louis, if, if I had, if, if I had a corporation that was selling stuff that was putting kids oh. in hospitals and making them get acute kidney failure the top 10 things that i would be working on today would be one making sure that that never happened again and two you know doing whatever i could do to help these people like right now and you know and essentially you hear nothing nothing um, yeah, you're, um, i would urge people i'm sorry go, go yeah ahead. no go ahead i was just going to say uh marlerblog.com i've got links up marlerblog.com you've got a, a great piece um yes yesterday i believe you posted this right sickening over 100 customers with e coli appears to have not cost wendy's anything yet and i agree with you i mean again i'd freak out if if, if you and i had a, a business and, and kids were getting sick people were getting sick from our product, whether regardless of how it happened, right? Uh, we we freak out. I, yeah, yeah. What, I, so I, I, I I don't get I don't get. I mean, I I get it in the some respects that you know, um, you know, nobody wants to admit fault, but the way, the way I look at it, the way I look at it is, uh, there's no there's no risk of admitting fault when you are in fact at fault I mean, if 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 the science said, okay it took me a know, minute to, i get yeah. it i get it i had to think it through i just yeah, yeah. get in my I mean, head there you know i mean uh, hey look if if you got accused or i got accused of something that we didn't do that's, that's you, you know that's 
you go, no, I didn't do that. But but if in fact you did do that, um, then the thing to do is to go, hey, I did that. And what can I do to make this better? Um, but, you know, so I don't, I never really quite clear why companies don't do more to rectify a problem that they clearly um, are responsible for, you yeah. know, and especially in a, in a case like Wendy's, where Wendy's can take care of people. They could, you know, especially people who have out-of-pocket medical expenses or no insurance at all. Yeah. <clears throat> they could do that and, you know, and then they can send the bill to the lettuce guys later. You know, yeah. it's like, yeah. this is not rocket science, but you know, I guess that's what keeps lawyers in business. So you know. don't you think, don't you think attorney Marler that, I mean, doesn't that, you know, this better than anyone in the world. It's, it's got to be, I don't know how I want to say it worse when you are in court with it and they did nothing knowing, yeah. knowing that again, I understand the early days. You don't know. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Was it, you know, I, I get, the <clears throat> you know, Absolutely. you know, yeah. You know, that's the science is pretty damn clear. Yeah, and it's I always look at it like you can do it the easy way or you can do it the hard way. <laughs> it's like, and you know, and unfortunately, as I've told people a long time ago, you know, uh, doing what I do, um, you know, lawsuits are a, a very blunt instrument for social change. You know, it it is, yeah. it's not, it is not a, I mean, there's a good reason why people don't like lawyers. <laughs> So, you know, I mean, it's, it's, we, 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 we like make lives, we make people's lives a little more difficult uh, for those people who we don't represent. You know, my job is to obviously take care of my clients and, sure. you know, to get corporations to do the right thing, but they could do the right thing if they wanted to. I was going to say, the, the other, yeah, the other, the other part of it, because I've heard that over um, my lifetime about lawyers and people, it's easy to, until you mm -hmm. need a lawyer, until you need a lawyer. You need a lawyer easy, yeah. That's right. yeah. Yeah. Right. That Tom Waits song, we sing it. Uh, he's a lawyer. He ain't the one for you or something. And <laughs> one of his sort of love songs, but the, again, until you need one, it's easy to, I don't want to say trash lawyers, but sure. whatever, whatever. Uh, so, you, I, have I told you a lawyer joke lately? I don't think so. Oh, I got one. Good one. You ready? You ready? It's, yeah, it's clean. Ready. It's a clean. Oh, joke. that's you know. I can do an adult disclaimer. No, 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 no. no, no. Okay. So, uh, why do you why do you never find a lawyer on a beach? Why? Because cats keep covering them up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there's got to be a lot of lawyer jokes. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of lawyer jokes. Yeah. Oh, that's <clears throat> terrible. Again. I, I want to say it again until you need one until right. for whatever reason you need a lawyer. It's easy. It's wrong to just lump, lump all lawyers together again in, in anything. I mean, there's good and bad right. in every field. We, we, we all know that it's whatever right. it is, but the, the, until you need one, because what government's coming at you, something for whatever reason, a multitude of reasons with this, with Wendy's, um, mm -hmm. Again, we, we've talked a lot about the romaine. It seems to cycle around uh, uh, every year. People, and I was talking about marlarizing, cleaning, cleaning. I see, I, I just, it pops out of my mouth, marlarizing. It's what I call it, really sure. cleaning. What can you suggest for people at home? When I get romaine, I mean, yeah, really. So, so like, really, I mean, there's, there, there's, a, um, uh, there's like four things, you know, there's cleaning, uh, there's separating, there's cooking and chilling. Those are kind of the four things that people need to pay attention to in uh, for food safety. <clears throat> and, you know, washing your hands, you know, uh, keeping your, you know, your kitchen clean, you know, getting rid of the sponge and the, the rag in your kitchen sink, you know, more frequently. Um, yeah, that's you know, great. and then when you, you know, when you get fresh fruits and vegetables and, you know, I'm a, I, people should eat fruits and vegetables. Uh, 
Thank you. Uh, but, except for kale, but that's a whole other story. Oh, uh, and, I'll never uh, forget when you said normal people don't eat kale. I was actually I'm in proud the, of that. I'm proud I was, of that. I was actually in the store the other. I think the thing about kale that that gets me is I was in the store the other day and there's some guy was like he literally he only had a, a handful of kale, um, and it's just that that the the consistency seems you know, quite rubbery, you know, <laughs> and, and it's not like normal. Uh, anyway, I think it's just like baby kale sometime. Yeah. 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 Baby anyway, kale. Um, so, but you know, uh, washing your fruits and vegetables yeah. just really, and it's not like you have to bleach them or, you know, make sure. it worse. It's just <clears throat> what you want to do is, you know, run them under cold, you know, water, scrub them, you know, get as, get as much of, get, everything off that you can um, because what you're trying to do is not take it down to zero risk, but take it down to a risk that your body will, um, you know, will deal with because human body has, <clears throat> you know, we stomach, we have acid, we have a, uh, you know, an intestinal system that essentially was designed to deal with, you know, varieties of pathogens over our evolutionary history. Um, but, you know, you have to be for people who are very young and you know, people who are older or immune compromised, you know, you need to, you know, be a bit more careful about what they consume, primarily because their immune systems are such that, um, you know, that they may not be able to combat, you know, whatever it is that's, you know, on that, that head of kale or, you know, or, or a leaf of kale or a leaf of romaine. So, yeah, I mean, and, you know, the other parts of, <clears throat> you know, cooking things thoroughly, um, you know, once you're done with them, putting in your refrigerator and cooling them down, um, uh, you know, separating, you know, the whole uh, cutting board thing is, is you know, really critical um, because you can cross-contaminate things in your restaurant or your restaurant or your kitchen, you know, chicken and a salad, you know, somebody winds up eating your salad and they have salmonella probably not from necessarily from the salad It's probably from the chicken that was, you know, you're cutting up on the same cutting board. So there are things that consumers, there's things that consumers can do both in their home and, you know, in restaurant settings that can help prevent, you know, foodborne illness. I'm talking with attorney uh, Bill Marler, marlerblog.com. Check out the, the most recent post that Bill has sickening over a hundred customers with E. coli appears to, have not cost Wendy's anything yet. What, mm-hmm. uh, what, what are the things I have to tell you this about kale? I, something came up in Facebook memories where I, there was a show that I enjoyed uh, about a Korean bodega in Toronto. It was called Kim's Convenience. And I don't know if you ever heard of it. It's great. It was a great, great series. And there was one time where Mr. Kim was saying, I think to some cops, he said, one day you never hear of kale. The next day, everything's kale. <laughs> they think of you when it came up. I wish I could find the clip. But it's, uh, again, washing, again, back to what we can do is watch that cross-contamination. Again, I, in fairness, or in reality, I should say, I don't have some of the same concerns because there's no chicken or anything cut on the cutting right. still need to clean it still need to yep. clean things yep. because yep. i don't want to cross contaminate if i have romaine or kale or whatever <clears throat> but if you wash it well uh, yep. you say it and keep it keep things separate etc you can minimize it where mm-hmm. do you th- see this going with wendy's you're going to be representing a lot of people in this area by the way you're going to be here in the area yeah probably <clears throat> i i've got a couple cases in the youngstown area so i'll be seriously I'll be- yeah, yeah. So I'll probably be. I'll oh, probably be to hang out. Oh God, sure. we're you, we can, yeah. you can you can we can we can do a radio show in the courtroom. So oh God, that, um, would, that would be yeah. in Youngstown <laughs> specifically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So so, uh, but yeah, there's you know, um, there's unfortunately there's a, a lot of a lot of folks very sick, and oh. you know I think where things where things are going to go, we've we have filed, you know, multiple lawsuits against the Wendy's. Uh, some of them are franchise. Some of them are um, oh, corporate oh, Okay, yeah. and so and so we've sued. We've sued them. We're I'm pretty close to knowing who grew the lettuce. Um, I, I know that it was grown in California. 
uh, and I know which valley it was grown in, um, but I have not identified the processor grower yet. Uh, obviously, Wendy's knows who that is. Um, they could just tell us. Um, yeah, wouldn't you that, think, forget, go ahead. I, yeah, I, and, and the yeah. FDA, you know, I mean, it's still, you know, I think you could arguably say it's still early in the investigation, um, um, you know, to, uh, to know exactly how the contamination occurred, you know, I mean, um, but, you know, it's my experience is, you know, the FDA has, you know, identified and the CDC has identified that, you know, it's like 88% of those who were questioned remembered eating uh, a hamburger with lettuce on it. <laughs> so it's a, that's a pretty, pretty, you know, and that's just, those are people that just remember. It doesn't mean that the other 12% yeah. didn't, it's just, they don't necessarily remember. So that's a pretty high percentage. Uh, and if you look at the, if you look at the time frame when people got sick, which was essentially July 26th to August 8th, it's pretty tight time frame, tight incubation period that really points to a, a, a perishable item like romaine lettuce. Yeah. So I think they'll they'll tumble to it. I mean, I you know, I I may get I may make it public before Wendy's and the FDA do because sometimes I can figure stuff out. Sure. It's not that I can figure things out faster. I think it's important for the public to know. Um, and so they can make appropriate buying decisions. I mean, yeah. you know, uh, last year, the Canadian government, think about this. <laughs> last year, the Canadian government said, we will not allow for the importation of any romaine lettuce from California, period. Now think about that. You know, I mean, our, our, we've poisoned so many Canadians. They've just said, no, no, no more. Moss, no moss. No, no we will. No, no more. We don't do it anymore. And, you know, they've softened that. They've said, well, we'll let it in if you test it, test for a E. coli. So, so, I mean, I think we're making some, you know, progress. But then now the question is, is that are they testing it when they ship it to Canada, but not testing it when they ship it around the United States? You know, that'll yeah, be interesting. Right. That'll be interesting to see whether or not that was implicated here in this outbreak. So. And I remember during the last outbreak, uh, and I'm trying to remember where it was, I think. Well, I'm, I don't want to say I think, but I remember seeing in some grocers that, where they had like a sign on where the mm -hmm. produce that it's not from California. Right. That right. Produce, not from right. that, you know, like alerting people so they sure. feel comfortable. Uh, buying it still still you got to wash it still you got to marlar i said yeah yeah no no it's it's uh, um yeah i mean you're absolutely right i mean it's uh, uh, even wendy's and the fda and the cdc have said that um the lettuce the salad in their lettuce is not implicated it's only the salad that they were using or the lettuce leaves that they were using on their hamburger buns okay. um you know were implicated so when you I think you think of uh, uh, when I think of something like this that they're not being forthcoming about they know who the supplier is they know they they know I would think and again you're you're the expert you're the lawyer I would think if a <coughs> jury comes up with punitive damages is that uh, you know this is probably not a punitive damages case and and you know what companies you know I mean. Hey, if I was like I said, if I was a, if I was a, um, a company, you know, like a Wendy's, if I was Dave, Dave, can't remember Dave's last name. Dave, Tom, Tom, you've got it, me. Uh, Dave Thomas. Dave Thomas. Yeah, you yeah. know, if I was Dave Thomas, you know, or I was Jack in the Box. In fact, Jack in the Box did this. You know, thirty years ago, uh, there were people who had out of pocket expenses, didn't have insurance, and in those situations. Jack in the Box paid eventually, early, actually quite early in the in the in the uh, outbreak, uh, offered to pay people's out of pocket medical expenses and wage loss so people weren't suffering. Yeah, and, um, you know, and that went a long way I'll to bet. softening. Yeah, I mean, softening people's viewpoints of the company, and you know, I mean. 
But you know, there are pe- there are going to be people in this outbreak, this Wendy's outbreak, that'll have tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars in medical expenses. Oh, yeah, Especially you know, on dialysis. And- yeah, yeah. Some some will have you know good insurance, and um, and so they won't have a lot of out of pocket. But there'll be some people who don't have health insurance and or, or who have high deductible you know kind of insurance that you know, we'll leave, you know, them with a five or $10,000 hole in their budget. Um, that makes, you know, difficult, life yeah. difficult. I mean, but, most, most, you know, many of the personal bankruptcies that occur in the United States occur because of medical bills. Yeah. And that, to me, that's we, I, philosophically, I just find that to be just abhorrent, but, um, you know, um, uh, you know, kick people, you sort of kick people when they're down. It's like, it's just not, to me, it's not a very appropriate. It's awful. But like, the, again, you're saying that this may not be punitive damages. I would think, again, if I were on a jury and um, thinking about a company, a corporation that could have been forthcoming, that could have been a little yep. uh, uh, quickly reactive, I, guess, <clears throat> I would think, okay, you know, Certainly, they didn't do this on purpose. There certainly there's got to be damages because there's damages. Yet they they reacted quickly. They they were forthcoming with the supplier and, and where it was because who knows where it's going. I mean, I don't think Wendy's is prob is probably not the only uh, fast food chain or or only place that's buying this hybrid romaine. Yeah, apparently it appears that appears at this point it may be it may be a very specialized product because there's no indication that it's anywhere outside of Wendy's um stores yeah. in the upper Midwest. So, you know, I mean I have a few clients who I have uh, one from North Carolina who who had driven to Wisconsin to pick up a dog. And apparently stopped on the way in Michigan and got a Wendy's hamburger and got sick when they got back to North Carolina. So, that, I mean, their case, there will be listed as a case. It'll just be, you know, there's just a process that that gets counted. But, yeah, no, I mean, we I could. Yeah, I, I would be if I was if I was a lawyer defending uh, Wendy's, I would be much feeling really good if I got to stand up in front of a jury and go, you know, we paid all their medical bills and their wage loss, you know, a year and a half ago. And here we are today. Really sorry they got sick. It was the lettuce guy that did it, you know. And we were, and if I may add, we were very upfront with yeah, 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 yeah. where it came it's, from. So more, yeah. Yeah. It strikes me that, you know, that's a, a much better defensive position to be in. And frankly, it's the, you know, it's one of those kind of weird things where, you know, the right legal strategy is the right moral strategy. And, you know, go yeah, figure. I hear you. Yeah. yeah, that's interesting. That's interesting. And you'll you'll be posting more at Marler blog. Probably yes. so. Probably so. As it progresses. So, and I'm not going to. Yeah, I mean, I would I would watch the CDC website uh, They uh, uh, today. I, I would think it's either today or tomorrow. Uh, those numbers will creep up again unfortunately and yeah i mean it's yeah it's just but again, it's a, watch your it's your blog because you've got a different it, it's different it's uh, the cd <laughs> again i'm not that, i don't want to say anything bad <clears throat> the cd the, the cdc they, they have their job to do and they do a you know they they do a very good job and and you know frankly the public health authorities in you know the counties in ohio and in michigan have done a really good job of, you know, tracking these cases. Um, you know, uh, unfortunately, um, it just takes, <clears throat> it takes time. And I think it, we're just getting, like I said, we're going to see this case get over a hundred this week and probably push to 150 before it's all said and done. And so we, we, do or don't know that Wendy's is no longer using. I would think they're no longer. No, no, no. They've they've pulled they've pulled this product. They've they've pulled the product. They're obviously still making hamburgers. They're yeah. using some other product, but to, to on their on their sandwiches. Um, and um, but yeah, it's 
but still, you know, the damage, damage done. Damage I mean, done. Yeah. yeah. They, that, this cow has gotten out of the barn. So. Yeah. Yeah. And again, I, I didn't mean to sound excited that you'll be in the area <clears> and be able to meet you face to face because it's for not a good reason because no, no, no. lawsuits, but, but I, we'll, I, I'd uh, we'll, hang we'll go, I'll, I'll watch you eat a kale salad and yeah. I may have a, and, a nice, a nice steak. I was so. going to say, I know you're not, I, I don't really want to say a company. <laughs> I won't say, I appreciate you and what you do in the world though, because again, Thanks. bring these things forward. <clears throat> well, the goal, the goal here should be to, you know, it's, I, I, in 2002, in the middle of a, really bad uh, E. coli outbreak uh, linked to a uh, hamburger. Um, you know, I, <clears throat> I wrote a, an op-ed for the Denver Post and it said, it said, put me out of business, please. Yeah. And, and, you know, and I, I, I said, hey, look, you know, meat industry, you know, by then I had taken, you know, $250 million from the meat industry on behalf of my clients over the course of a decade. And, you know, and I just said, you know, look, if you don't like trial lawyers, yeah. clean up your act. And yeah. I yeah. won't have anything to do. Yeah. And, you know, and the fact of the matter is, is they did and it worked. And it was a combination of, you know, government, you know, regulation and industry stepping up. And, you know, I remember in 2012, uh, 2013, which would have been the uh, 20th anniversary of the Jack in the Box case, I spoke to the American Meat Association, their annual meeting, and was said, hey, look, <laughs> you guys, you guys did it, you know, and then the question is, is how do you get other industries to see that these things are possible, that, you know, a, a company like Wendy's does not have to be in the, you know, in, in the, in the middle of this terrible situation <clears throat> maybe it's not having an impact on their bottom line financially but yeah. i've got to think that you know people in food safety at wendy's and you know the corporate offices you know can't be feeling very good about the fact that <clears throat> there are hundreds of people sickened by going to their restaurants and i, I just very sick why why we can't seem to look at what the beef industry did to yeah, put me out of business true. and do the same thing for the leafy green industry is, is frankly beyond me. It's just, it really is. I, 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 <clears throat> I scratch my head. If you can give me another, I mean, what, what do you want? Why, why do you think not? Is, have they not been yeah. hit enough? Uh, I would think. Yeah. Man, all the, all yeah. The you've been doing <clears throat> in domain. I, I I wish I could answer that question. And I, and I don't mean to talk, you know, get into the politics of things, but, you know, I, I think it's something in, you know, the American psyche. I mean, um, you think about it, you, you look at our reaction, you know, in during COVID, I mean, to the, the fact that we, we lead the world in the number of people who died from COVID. <clears throat> and I, I just find that to be, given the fact that we are one, you know, one of the more advanced countries in the world, I find it just remarkably unacceptable. Then, you know, you look at <clears throat> however you feel about guns, but you look at like, you know, school shootings. I mean, and how we <clears throat> seem you know, incapable of, you know, of, of, of dealing with that. I mean, and, and there are kids for God's sakes, you know? Um, and so I kind of look at that and go, well, <laughs> is, is a couple hundred people with E. coli, and, you know, 20 people with acute kidney failure. Is that just an acceptable part of being able to get a hamburger for uh, about 50? Yeah. A, yeah. It just seems it seems, it seems outside of my way I think about things. Of course, yeah. <clears throat> but, but that's what, yeah, okay. And law, so, yeah, maybe lobbyists. I mean, I don't know. You know this obviously a million times better than I. But, and you're right. And again, not not getting political. When I, but read about a uh, um, 
teenagers. Uh, uh, it was a 15 and a 14 year old and an 11 year old doing a carjacking. Right. And just people shoot. I, it's just, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's, it's crazy. Yeah, seems crazy. Yeah, everything's upside down. I know you got a meeting soon, but I appreciate right. the relationship so much. Good to see you. Good to see you. Other marlinblog.com, <clears throat> check out the CDC, and hopefully you'll be able to update us in the not too distant future. Yeah, and uh, I'll give you a heads up when I'm making it to Youngstown. Well, yeah, I, I mean, that's going to be a ways out, correct? Or... Uh, hard to know. Hard to know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see how the, see what the court systems are. So, how they, they, they've been still a little slow post, uh, you know, COVID. So, um, but I think we'll, we'll be getting there so, soon enough. Okay. I'm looking forward to meeting you face to face. Attorney Bill Marler, right. thank you as always. And folks, Marlerize your <laughs> right? Thanks, Bill, so much. Right. I just love